Um, essentially, I want to talk about food addiction or if you're using food as a drug. And this is very important because it's so common and so prevalent out there. Like we're all doing it. Even I do it. Even though I've lost the 42 kilos, I still often turn to food when I'm not hungry. And if you're eating for any reason other than you're actually hungry, you're eating for nutrition, then you must be eating for an emotional reason. It might be something as simple as you're bored, you have nothing better to do, um, and you need more fun activities in your life, and you can do that by identifying the things that you like, making a list, going out and doing them. Or um, there's an emotion that you are suppressing, and kind of pushing down, not dealing with, not facing um, when you're eating and you're not hungry. So... I was reflecting a lot on my own life, my own experience with being an emotional eater for the majority of my life and binging all the time. And I was trying to figure out where it stemmed from. And I watched a video on YouTube and this woman said, um, think about whatever food it is that you often turn to um, when you're down. For me, that's chocolate um, or carbs in general. And uh, she said, think about the first time that you had that food and who gave it to you and what circumstance and how it made you feel. And for me, the first time I remember having chocolate is um, when I was quite down and upset. I can't remember what it was exactly. It was either um, I was lonely at school because I just transitioned to Australia at the age of five. I didn't speak any English, didn't have any friends, was bullied at school. Um, or it was something in the household, my parents were fighting, something like that. But one of those situations, it was one of the first times that I was given chocolate and it was given to me by my mum and it was her way of comforting me or making me feel better. Now, on a uh, biological level, when you eat chocolate or when you eat sweets in general or carbohydrates, your brain releases dopamine, which is a feel-good chemical. So it's a reward system. So when you eat sweets, your body gives you a reward. It makes you feel good even though it's short and temporary. But what happens is we then develop that pattern because the positive reinforcement when we eat, we feel good. But because it's short term, what happens is we feel bad later because we've overeaten, we feel disgusting, um, we've put on more weight, and it's not long term what we want or what's best for us. So we've relieved the issue temporarily, but not long term. We've actually caused a bigger issue for ourselves long term which can often lead to things like self-loathing, self-hating, like hating your body, um, thinking you're unlovable, all those sorts of things because of the society, that, the, the society that we're in where women believe or women are taught to believe that their worth is based on how they look and how much they're desired by men. So if you don't fit a particular um, preconceived notion of what a woman is supposed to look like or an attractive woman, it can be very hard on your self-esteem. And that's what happened with me is once I got into my teenage years and realized that, you know, all the guys were into all the other girls, but none of them were interested in me, it started to affect my self-esteem over and above the issues that were already happening at home. So it just kept reinforcing over and over again that, you know, you feel bad. The only way to feel better is eat something sweet. Um, but then, of course, you feel worse later. So how do you go about changing this? Well, simply put. If food is the crutch that you're leaning on in hard times, you can't get rid of it or expect to get rid of it unless you have something else to lean on. So if right now food is the only crutch or support system that you have when you're feeling emotionally down, then it means that you need to get to know yourself better um, so that you can identify means of uh, responding to emotionally difficult times without necessarily turning to food. And that's why I always say, your weight loss journey is about you getting to know you. It's not about following a generic diet. And yeah, sure enough, you may follow a 101 generic diet and you can lose weight doing that. But unless you go through each process, uh, not beating yourself up for not adhering to the diet 100%, but instead using it as a means to better understand yourself. So say you follow um, a set diet and you find that oh you know what when I eat the bread first thing in the morning it sets me off all day all I want to eat is carbs if you can pick up on stuff like that then you can learn from each diet that you do but it can be a very long and exhausting and emotionally frustrating process so what I would highly recommend is to sit down 
with a professional, prefer preferably somebody who's been in your position before, someone like me, who's been significantly overweight, who's had trouble uh, with food addiction and has managed to come out the other end, not just having lost the weight, but kept it off and developed a much better relationship with himself. Look for a coach like that, somebody who can give you the steps and tools you need to action in the right order, in the right way, instead of going out there and trying to sort of figure it out from scratch, trying to reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already out there. But in essence, what I do in my course, uh, Self Love for Permanent Weight Loss, which is launching in a couple of weeks, is I work with women who have been in my shoes, women who have dieted on and off for decades, years, spent thousands of dollars. We spent about 20,000, sorry, $40,000 each per woman in our lifetime just on diets. So I would say, don't put yourself in that same category of being, you know, the average woman that spends 17 years of her life dieting or the average woman that spends $40,000 over her lifetime on diets. Find a solution, find a system that works, that's been proven to work, and put yourself into that system. Do not reinvent the wheel from beginning to end because you will frustrate yourself so much um, and you will give up and just keep reinforcing to yourself that you can't lose the weight. So find a program that works, preferably one that teaches you self-love, one that helps you identify um, the reasons that you are turning to food for comfort, um, and then identifying what other means of comfort or healing you can use to solve or relieve that inner hurt or that past hurt. So whatever it is that you went through in your childhood, some of us don't have any particular traumas, um, it's just the reinforced habit of eating when we're bored and that releases a good hormone. But for some of us, we have much bigger issues from our childhood um, that do need to be addressed. And I know that for the generation before me, it was very hard or it is very hard to discuss um, those sort of emotional things because that's not something that generation did. It's difficult, it's hard. And there's been so much brainwashing in that generation where... Um, people and women in their 40s and 50s and 60s today who were sexually abused in their younger years have so much difficulty, difficulty talking about it because of the society, the patriarchal society we're in, where we're taught as women to protect the reputation of men, even the ones that have abused us and done wrong by us. And the shame is put on us for having been sexually abused as though we were the ones who were dirty or we're the ones who were asking for it. That's what society tells us. So being able to overcome that sort of stuff, um, hey Teresa, and, um, and getting that stuff out, being able to talk about it in itself is healing because you're putting the truth out there. Holding the truth in is like a poison. It causes so much resentment, it can lead to cancer, so many health issues. So if you wanna find a, a therapist or somebody to talk to in that situation, uh, I would highly recommend it. Um, but absolutely consider your weight loss journey a journey of getting to know yourself because everybody is different um, everybody responds differently to different things so getting to know yourself is a form of self-love if you were in a relationship with somebody and they didn't want to get to know you or they didn't want to listen to you or they just never had time for you you wouldn't feel loved so it's the same thing treat yourself the way that you would want an ideal partner to treat you listen to yourself Get to know yourself. Don't beat yourself up when you ate something that you shouldn't. Just sit down after and revisit the events of the day and try to identify what was going on in here that made me turn to food for emotional comfort, for temporary comfort. And once you identify what that thing was, then you can start to look at ways to soothe other than turning to food. So that's my tip for the day, guys, or for the week. So I will be uploading this video, but I do need to end the video now because if it goes over 15 minutes, it does not allow me to download it. All right, guys, have a beautiful day. Happy Monday. Happy week ahead. Remember, you can reach out to me anytime via direct message or uh, just any sort of chat, um, and I will be very happy to have a chat with you and see what we can do to get you moving in the right direction. All right, guys, have a beautiful day and thank you for being here. Bye.